Hey there guys, I'm Sonic Ghost, and today we're going to be taking a look at how to replace the hard drive on the PlayStation 3. Now there are a lot of different tutorials on the internet detailing this process, but I decided to make my own simply because a lot of these tutorials I've seen about this do not go over in detail all the processes from start to finish, which is what I'm going to be doing here today. So we're going to be needing a few things for this procedure. The first thing we're going to be needing is a replacement hard drive for our PlayStation 3. Now this hard drive here is a 2.5 inch hard drive. This is the same size of a hard drive that you will find inside of a laptop computer. So if you're familiar with the size of those hard drives then you know what this will look like. Now we need it to be a 2.5 inch drive in order to fit into the PlayStation 3. Anything bigger will not fit. It also has 5400 RPM. This is the speeds of what data is read from the drive and what is written to it. Now Sony does not specify what RPM limits the PlayStation has, but most people recommend just get a 5400 RPM hard drive. So I say just get one with this speed, it's better safe than sorry. Now this is a 1TB hard drive that I'm using, you can get any size that you want. I just wanted to go ahead and get a 1TB drive, figuring that this should be enough data for my system for right now in order to store all my games, all my videos, and everything else I would want to have on my system. Another thing that you're going to be needing is a Phillips head screwdriver. We'll be using this to remove any of the screws that we find on our PlayStation 3, keeping that hard drive in place. Another thing we'll be needing is a USB thumb drive formatted to FAT32. Now we're needing this because we need to install fresh software on the PlayStation 3, as when we insert our hard drive into the system, it's not going to have any data on it. So we need to have this flash drive ready to go in order to install the latest firmware for the PlayStation 3. And I'll be going over later where you can download that and where you have to put it on your thumb drive. The last thing we'll be needing, and this one's optional, is we'll be needing an external hard drive in order to back up all of our data from our current hard drive installed into the PlayStation 3. Now if you're going to be using a external hard drive to back up your data, make sure that you have a hard drive that has an external power supply, meaning that you can plug this into the wall giving it power. If you're going to be using an external hard drive that just plugs right into your system, chances are it's not going to work and that's because the PlayStation 3 will not be able to give that hard drive enough power for it to function properly, meaning it won't show up on the system whatsoever. So if you use an external hard drive, make sure it has a plug attached to it and you can plug into the wall. That way it will get enough power being able to be recognized by your PlayStation 3. There is one thing that we need to do with our external hard drive before we can use it with our PlayStation 3, and that is we need to format the FAT32, as this is the only file format that the PlayStation 3 will recognize. Now there is no easy way to do this as far as I know without using any third party software. The software that I am using to format my external hard drive is GUI Format. The link will be in the description below if you want to go ahead and use this software as well. With this software you want to make sure you select the right drive letter of your external hard drive, so double check what that is in your computer settings. You want to leave the default allocation level what it is by default as you don't need to mess with any of those numbers. Call your drive whatever you would like, hit start, and now your hard drive will be formatted in FAT32 format. I'm going to go ahead and open up my computer here just to make sure that it's formatted to FAT32 and as you can see now our external hard drive is formatted to FAT32. So now we are ready to perform this hard drive replacement process on our PlayStation 3. And before we get everything started, I want to go ahead and show this off right now that the current hard drive installed on my PlayStation 3 is a 320 gigabyte hard drive. Right now, the hard drive is essentially all filled up with only about 4 gigabytes free of data. We are going to be increasing all that once we install our 1 terabyte hard drive. So the first thing we want to go ahead and do now on our system is we want to go ahead and go over to system settings and we want to scroll all the way back down to the bottom here until we find backup utility. This is what we're going to be using to backup all of our data so you want to make sure at this point you have your external hard drive plugged into the system. Go ahead and select backup. Once you click on backup it's going to give you a prompt saying that all your trophies on the system will not be backed up and it'll tell you what profiles 
you need to go ahead and sync to server if you have not done this already. Once now we know that, we would go ahead and say yes. We let that backup utility start by selecting what hard drive you have plugged in. And now we're gonna be here for a while. It depends on how much data you have in your system for how long this is going to take. Since I have over 200 gigabytes worth of data on the system, this process is gonna take a few hours. For me, it took about nine hours, so I let this process run essentially the entire day went off and did some stuff and when I got back home I found this screen backup complete size 257 gigabytes that's how much data was backed up now with all of our data backed up onto our external hard drive there's one last thing we need to go ahead and do in order to back up our data you want to go ahead and sign into a PlayStation Network account If you don't have one of these already make one because you're gonna be needing this to back up your trophies so once you're signed into your PSN account go over to your trophies click on your trophy icon with triangle and select sync with server. Another way you can do this is by going over to your profile in your friends list, highlight yourself and just press X to go view it and it'll start syncing up your trophies. Once that's all done, we have all of our data backed up on our external drive and we have all our trophies synced to the server. We're ready to replace the hard drive in our PlayStation. So at this point we need to go ahead and unhook all the wires from the back of our PlayStation 3 and get it out in the open as we're needing to access the bottom of the system. So what we need to do is we need to flip it over and we need to look for on the bottom which is kind of hard to see in the camera but there is this little flap that you can see and you can pull it up with something like a fingernail and you can go ahead from there take a screwdriver and unscrew the one screw that is holding a piece of plastic in place. Once that screw is out, we'll be able to remove the faceplate on the front of our PlayStation 3, revealing the hard drive. So once that screw is out, you want to go ahead and lift up the system, and you'll see this little faceplate here that tells you all the information about your system, and there you go. This is our hard drive. I should mention this is the process for a PlayStation 3 Slim. In order to take out the hard drive on a PlayStation 3 Fat, as well as the Super Slim model, the procedure is a bit different but functions essentially the same way. Now that we got our hard drive out, we see that there are four screws in place holding this hard drive into this metal docking bay. So we need to go ahead and unscrew all four of these screws. Now that we got all the screws out, we'll be able to slide this hard drive right out of this little metal docking bay. You'll see on the side there will be a little flap you can stick your finger in, and you'll be able to pull the hard drive right out. As if you tried to pull it out any other way, it won't budge. Now that we got our hard drive out, it's time to take our new hard drive and screw it into place. So let's take that little metal tray that we have from earlier, and make sure we put in the hard drive the right way where we have the connectors facing outward and the bottom of it facing towards the little flap on the bottom. Now that we got the hard drive back in place, it's time for us to screw in all those screws that we took out from earlier. Once we have all those screws inserted into our hard drive, we need to go ahead and install this hard drive into the system itself. So, just take your hard drive and slide it right back into place, making sure that once it's back inside your PlayStation, push that little metal flap up, and now it's secure. So we need to take that little plastic faceplate from earlier and put it back onto the front of our PlayStation here. Once that's back into place, we want to go ahead and put back that screw that will keep this thing from falling off. And we are all done. That's everything that we need to do in terms of replacing the hard drive itself. Now it's in place, it's ready to be used, and once this screw's back in place, nothing will fall out. So now with this all done, we need to go ahead and get ourselves the newest version of the firmware for the PlayStation 3 and install it onto our new hard drive.
So now we need to go ahead and head over to Sony's site and look for the system software update page. The link will be in the description below to this page. So we need to go ahead and click on download now. This will bring us to another page allowing us to download the latest version of the PlayStation 3's firmware onto a external storage device like a USB flash drive. So we need to go ahead and scroll down where we see download now. Let this update download a bit. Once it's done, we want to go ahead and copy this onto a flash drive. So we want to go ahead and plug in a FAT32 formatted flash drive into our computer and we need to create two folders. The first one is PS3 in all caps. And then we want to go ahead and enter that folder and create another one called update, once again, all capital letters. Inside the update folder, we want to go ahead and place in that update data that we just downloaded from Sony's site. And then once that's copied onto our flash drive, we are ready to plug this flash drive into our PlayStation 3 and install the latest firmware onto our system. So now at this point, we need to go ahead and press the PlayStation 3 button and hold it down until it gives us a couple beeps and then turns off. Once the system turns off, you want to go ahead and hold the power button down once again. Keep your finger held down on that power button until you hear two beeps in a row. Then you want to go ahead and let it go. If you've done this correctly, you'll be prompted with this screen telling you to plug in your controller via USB to the PlayStation and then press the PS button. Now we have six different options here. We want to go ahead and select option number five. As since we just inserted a fresh hard drive into the PlayStation 3, it has not been formatted yet and we need to format it to the same exact format that the PlayStation 3 uses. So. Scroll down to number 5, select yes, and now it is formatting the hard drive to what the PlayStation 3 will recognize. After a few seconds, the hard drive will be formatted, and then it will restart, prompt you with the same screen that we had before. So once we reconnect our controller and press that PlayStation button, it will give us a new prompt saying that the system software cannot run correctly. At this point, you want to go ahead and plug in your USB flash drive that has that update data into your system and then press both the start and select buttons at the exact same time. Now the system will be checking that USB flash drive that we just plugged in for the latest firmware that the system will accept. After another couple seconds, the system will be able to recognize that we do have the latest firmware onto our flash drive and will proceed with the installation process. The system will reboot after that progress bar reach 100% and now we are ready to actually install the latest system software onto our PlayStation 3. So once again, we want to go ahead and press the PlayStation button when our controller hooked up to the system. And it's going to be checking our thumb drive once again for the updates, so make sure it's still plugged into the PlayStation 3. After another couple seconds, it will start installing the latest version of the PlayStation 3's firmware. Once that's all done, your PlayStation 3 will reset and you'll be prompted with the same screens that you were prompted with when you first bought your PlayStation 3 and hooked up for the first time. So at this point, just set up the PlayStation 3 like you would normally and after you're done with all your setup, you'll be sent straight back to the main menu. Once we are back on the PlayStation 3's main menu, we see that everything here is working perfectly fine and everything is installed just the way that it should be. So we want to go ahead into settings here, scroll down to our system settings and go down to system information. And we'll see that we have a lot of free space on this system. We have a total of 828 gigabytes free out of 931. So the PlayStation 3 is recognizing all the data properly on our one terabyte hard drive. So now we want to go ahead and restore all that data that we have from our backup from earlier. So we want to go ahead, head back into our system settings, go to backup utility, and from here we want to go ahead and select restore. At this point you want to make sure you plug in your external hard drive that has your backup data on it. So we want to go ahead and select yes for restoring our PlayStation 3, select the hard drive that has your backup. At this point it's going to be preparing your system for a restore. 
you'll get your backup data prompted up here that we had from earlier. If you have multiple backups, there'll be more than one here. You go ahead, select yes for restore this information. And now the system will be preparing your hard drive for yet another formatting. Once it's all formatted, the system will go down to a completely different screen, restoring your information. Now this process can take sometimes about the same time it took for your backup from what I've read online or longer. Me personally, my backup took 9 hours while this process took me 17 hours. So make sure when you're restoring your data that you know for a fact that you have plenty of time to sit down and keep this system on. I kept mine on overnight and when I woke up the next day, I still had another 3 hours to go, but once it was all done, then I was able to turn off my system, let it rest for a bit, and then use it later on. But once the restore is complete, you'll be prompted with this screen here telling you press your controller's X button to restart the system. Once the PlayStation 3 has rebooted itself, you'll be prompted with the standard old warning screens, then after that, you'll be sent into the PlayStation 3's menu with all your data intact. As you can see, my theme has changed to what it was from before, and all the games along with all the folders and everything else that I have in the system is now restored onto this hard drive. If I go down to the system settings once again and look up my system information, we'll see now that the free space number has changed to 570 gigabytes. So now all my data is back onto my PlayStation 3. So now there's just one last thing we need to do to get all our data back onto the system, and that is we need to sign into our PlayStation Network account and sync up our trophies once again to our system. Once the sync operation is complete, you'll see all your trophies are now onto this new hard drive. Syncing your trophies now with this new hard drive could take you a few minutes. For me, it took about half an hour. I've heard it taking a little bit longer with some other people's hard drives. It just depends on how many trophies that you had on your profile. But we see that we have all my trophies now intact onto this hard drive. And everything here is now restored onto this new hard drive. And now I have plenty of free space to work with for installing any new games. There's just one last thing I need to mention. You need to go ahead and head into whatever PlayStation Network accounts that are on your system and activate them with Sony. Because at this point, this hard drive is not activated, but your account is still activated with this PlayStation 3. So you want to go ahead and log into your PlayStation Network account Head into your settings on that PlayStation Network account. Go down to activation, activate your system, and activate it for whatever features that you use, like your games and your movies and such. This will not change any of the activation settings on Sony's website, so if you only have one PlayStation 3 activated before you did this hard drive replacement process, and you log into the site to see how many PlayStation 3s you have now activated, it's still only going to be one system active. This does not duplicate your system. But that is it. Now everything is restored onto this new hard drive. Our games are intact. All of our saves are here. All of our trophies are back onto the system. And any users that you had as well are backed up and restored onto this brand new hard drive. So I hope everyone found this video helpful. And with that all said, thank you all for watching. And I'll see you guys next time.